Welcome to the AM Electronics video tutorials. Today, I would like to introduce a 6-inch Bauer benchtop grinder, which I bought from Harbor Freight Tools recently, and the tuning I made. While the grinder looked good on picture, it was not as appealing in reality. Why? First, the tool rests were not solid enough to place drill grinding attachments, which I will show in next video. Second, when I first assembled it and turned on, it was vibrating like hell. The grinding wheels were not balanced. The first fix was not that difficult. I used the 1 8 inch steel angle and welded two little threaded mount plates to it as you see. It was mounted between two wheel covers, making the new unified and much more robust rest. But the vibrations, how would I remove these? I tried to first dress the wheels with diamond dresser. The surface of the wheel became nicer, but vibrations did not stop. Then I tried to rotate the wheels, or change the way they were bolted on. There was little to no effect of these exercises. I needed to balance it in a more fundamental manner. There are several videos on YouTube showing how to balance the wheels, removing them and building special setups with parallels, arbors and bearings. But in this video I will show how electronics engineer would approach balancing the wheel without removing it, directly on the grinder. Let us start with a bit of theory. If the mass of the wheel material is spread non-uniformly relative to the axis of rotation, it may be expressed as an equivalent mass m located at a radial distance r from the axis. When the wheel rotates, it creates centrifugal force f which is a product of m r omega, rotational speed. This force vector is applied to the axis of rotation and directed along the radius. If we place the mass with equivalent rotation momentum at location opposite to imbalance, the force will be compensated. The projection of the vector on horizontal and vertical directions will be f times sin omega t and f times cosine omega t respectively. If we look at horizontal component, it will be applied to the body of the grinder and create acceleration of the body a equals to f divided by m according to Newton's law. If we could measure the amplitude and phase of the acceleration waveform, we will be able to immediately find the position and amount of Mies bonance and place a counterweight to compensate it. The desired angular position alpha may be found from the, the offset of the top of the wave from the reference angle which we will find from photosensor. We will need an electronic accelerometer. Fortunately, analog devices makes ADXL 335 three-axis silicon mums analog accelerometers. These are small circuits which output voltage proportional to acceleration. Their axes X and Y are in the plane of the integrated circuit package, and Z axis is perpendicular to the top surface of the package. They are very sensitive. In this application, we will only use the axis signal and apply it to input A of an oscilloscope through AC coupling capacitor as shown in the schematic. It will show acceleration waveform. We also need to know the phase of this signal relative to some convenient reference point link to rotation of the wheel. We will use a reflective photosensor, consisting of a light source, infrared LED, and a light sensor, phototransistor. We will attach a piece of sticky retro reflecting film to the wheel and let the output signal drive channel be of the oscilloscope. It will give us a reference pulse at the time when reflecting film passes by. The infrared LED and phototransistor are preferred here to make the system insensitive to ambient light. I needed a convenient way to place counterweights. I made an aluminum puck with concentric slot and used it as an external washer for mounting wheel. The counterweights will be pieces of a strange material used as weights in window shades. I guess that it is an iron powder and plastic matrix. It is very easy to cut to shape and insert into the slot. I will make different weights to adjust the compensation. Because the centrifugal force is radial, just plugging a piece of this material into the slot holds it reliably. Once balancing is done, a double-sided mounting tape may be used to hold it permanently. Now let us place the photo sensor and accelerometer of the grinder. I am mounting the sensor board to a piece of wood and attaching it to the tool rest with a magnet. Here is the reflector. I am using Harbor Freight reflecting tape. It needs to be placed somewhere on the surface of the wheel where the photo sensor will see it. Now mount in the accelerometer. The best location is on the motor neck close to the wheel. Make sure that the chip is in the middle vertically, so that its z-axis picks up horizontal component of acceleration. The accelerometer and photosensor are powered by a single lithium cell. 
its voltage is around 4.1 volts. The clean power from battery is essential to have clear, noise-free picture on oscilloscope. Now it is time to test the setup. Kicking the motor in horizontal direction allows to determine the polarity of acceleration. Positive excursion corresponds to acceleration directed away from the top of the accelerometer package towards the tool rest. Rotating the wheel manually allows to adjust the beam of LED for optimum sensitivity. Because the retro reflector always reflects towards the source of light, regardless of the incident angle, the sensor may tolerate misalignment. It is time now to test all together. Turning on the grinder and letting it spin up. As expected, the wheel is not properly balanced, and that is why we see large amplitude of acceleration. The yellow trace is the accelerometer output signal. The red trace is the reference pulse signal from photosensor. We see peaks on red trace when the reflecting strip passes photosensor. The peak of yellow trace is located at the angle of the Mies balance. The time interval between reference pulses corresponds to 360 degrees. So by estimating the relative position of the peak in the signal, one can determine where to put counterweight. In fact, it must be placed at the angle which is 180 degrees off the location of the sine wave top. It makes sense to prepare few counterweights with the mass and sizes with binary 1, 2 and 4 ratio to use combination of weights and iterative process. The next step is to calibrate the wets. Since absolute mis balance is not known, we can start with placing one of the weights in the location opposite to the top of sine wave. If the location of the top did not move, but the amplitude went down, we are on the right track. The ratio of change, before versus after, is n, and the mass of the place weight is x, then we need n times x total mass to completely compensate the mis balance. One could use a scales to weight the mass of the current counterweight, and decide which additional weights to put in. The balancing process may require few iterations until the proper compensation is found. If the position of the top of the sine wave moves to the right or left after weight placement, the changing phase means that the weight was placed in incorrect angular location. The iterations for finding correct weight may continue until the yellow trace is virtually flat. Note that the accelerometer will also detect vibrations of the windings of the powered motor. One could turn off the power to eliminate such confusing noise. The wheel will continue to spin at nearly constant rate by inertia, and there will be some time to observe the signal free from AC winding noise. It may be convenient to use the cursors to mark the amplitude of acceleration in one iteration, and check if the amplitude decreased or increased after placement of additional weights. If it decreases, do the next iteration because the Mies balance is not yet compensated. If it increases, the weight was placed in wrong location, if the waveform changed polarity, too much weight was added. The balance is overcompensated. When the amplitude is very close to zero, one can adjust weight in a smaller increments. Finally, it is the time to check the quality of balancing. If there are no more significant vibrations, the weights may be mounted in the slot permanently by wrapping the weight into adhesive tape and then reinserting it into the slot. It may be also desirable to place only a single weight there. Here is how. Take out the weights and use good scales to measure the total mass of all. In our example, it is 5.2 grams. Then let us take the original stripe of Matterall and weigh it, it is 87.9 grams. Next, measure the length to determine the linear density. It is 160 millimeters now. From that we can calculate that the optimal length of the single replacement piece is 9.66 millimeters. Cut a piece of that length. Now we can check if the weight is correct. And it is. Placing on on the wheel shows that the balance is decent. It may be still possible to improve it as the yellow trace is not completely flat, but for practical purpose I will leave it as is. Closing notes. The electronic balancing of grinding wheel is advantageous because it compensates not only the misbalance of the wheel, but potentially that of other components like the rotor of the motor. Its high sensitivity reduces the time to balance the wheel. It is also possible to measure and calculate the exact weight to be placed to make balancing even faster. The period of grinder rotation without load is proportional to the power line frequency, typically 16.7 milliseconds is seen between the photosensor pulses. It means that delay from the reference pulse on the oscilloscopes is approximately 46 microseconds per degree. 
one can measure and use the delay from reference to precisely find the angle at which the weight should be placed. I use the oscilloscope, but what if you don't have one? Then you may use the PC with a stereo sound card together with the sound card oscilloscope. You can find some program on the internet, I'm leaving links below. If you like the video, please click on like. If you find this method useful, or use it, I would appreciate your comments. Good luck!